Hello everybody and welcome back to Dollar Tree Dinners. My name is Rebecca and today we're going to be reinventing ham. I guess you can't really reinvent ham, but everybody knows that the secret to saving money on your grocery bill is to reinvent leftovers or make the most out of meat particularly. With Christmas right around the corner, there is a good chance that you guys are gonna have some leftover Christmas ham. Unless of course you make my Dollar General Christmas dinner, you might not have any leftover ham. But if you go to a family member's house for Christmas or you cook a full ham, you're likely gonna have some leftovers. And I'm hoping that these give you some ideas on how you can best utilize that leftover ham without potentially getting sick of eating ham. Now, of course, the best way to extend the shelf life of your ham is to simply freeze it. So maybe these will give you some ideas after Christmas, or maybe they'll give you some ideas three to six months down the road when you do thaw out your ham and decide to use it. We're gonna be making four different meals with leftover ham today, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Now. I think ham is the perfect breakfast food and it also pairs really well with cheese. I tried a recipe off the Pillsbury website which was for an everything bagel breakfast bomb and they also have a recipe for a freezer friendly ham and cheese breakfast bomb. So I think that's a really good place to start. I am going out of town so having some things in my freezer that will be quick to eat when we get back without having to immediately go to the grocery store is usually a really good option. So to make these, you're gonna need eggs, cheese, ham, and some layered biscuits. I'm gonna start by scrambling the eggs. It calls for four, which is gonna make about eight of those biscuits. You can also feel free to double the recipe and prep some extras for your freezer. And preheat the oven to 350. Two tablespoons of margarine or butter into a skillet. Now we can scramble up our little eggies. Not fully melted yet, but it should be fine. Once my eggs are fully cooked, I'm gonna set those aside to cool. We need about a cup of our leftover ham. And for me, some of the hardest parts of working with ham is that I just kinda wanna eat it. I really honestly think the ham might be one of my favorite meats in general. I really like the flavor of it. It's really tender, but I'm gonna go through and chop it up into smaller pieces too, and try to remove, like that was a really tough piece. If I find any ligaments or tougher pieces, I can take those out. Cause if your knife is not gonna cut through it easy, your teeth are not gonna cut through it easy. I'm gonna try to dice this up as finely as I can. I feel like these ham and cheese biscuits in particular are gonna remind me of a ham and cheese hot pocket which I absolutely love. And the measurements here are kind of arbitrary. If you end up with more than a cup of ham, go for it. Just means that your biscuits are gonna be more meaty. Into a bowl, I'm gonna add my ham. Now, another thing to bear in mind is that the ham is pre-cooked, so we really don't have to heat it up or cook it or anything like that. The recipe says to do that, but I'm not gonna do that because I prefer when this mixture is kind of cool when it goes in the biscuits. Add in our scrambled eggs. and some cheese. It says one cup of sharp cheddar. Mix that all together and that is gonna be our filling for our biscuits. Definitely making a mess as usual. That is a requirement. If you're gonna be in the kitchen, you gotta make a mess. That looks pretty good, let's set that aside. In the Christmas crack video, I talked about these sheets of parchment paper from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna be using one of these, but I'm gonna be cutting it in half. That's also kind of the nifty parts about these sheets is that they're already folded, so they're really easy to cut in half. And then I have two small baking sheets here. Let's grab our biscuits. This is the same process as the last video where I made the sausage, egg, and cheese variation of this. Just try to find a place where you can open up the biscuit and open it up as much as you can so that it forms like a little pocket. I do find that I prefer these when they have a pretty good amount of filling in them. I like the filling to biscuit ratio when they're a little bit overstuffed. Gonna seal those back up. Ever since I posted that video, this has honestly been one of my favorite breakfast and I have made it no less than three times since I posted that video. I'm excited to try the ham variation of it. Let me repeat that for the other seven biscuits. 
I get some really great tips from my comment section and recently when I talked about these, one of the comments was not to use an entire egg to make the egg wash, but just to save the bowl that you scrambled the eggs in. Add a little bit of water to it, give it a mix, and then you have an egg wash without having to waste an entire egg. Sprinkle a little bit of cheese on the top of each of these biscuits, and then we're ready to bake these. 350 for about 18 to 20 minutes. We have not eaten breakfast this morning, so a couple of these are gonna be my breakfast for the day, and then the rest of them, I'm gonna let them cool completely, and then I'll put them in the freezer. Do they still make breakfast Hot Pockets? I should look that up, because I just tore one of these open and it smells exactly like a Hot Pocket. Let's try one. My dreams have come true. I can recreate my favorite Hot Pocket really easily at home. The more I eat these, the more I realize they're not even gonna make it to the freezer because they're probably gonna be our breakfast tomorrow as well. The second thing that we're gonna be making is kind of an adaptation of a Monte Cristo. A Monte Cristo is kind of like a ham and cheese sandwich meets French toast. Now the perks to a sandwich like this is that it works as either a breakfast or a lunch sandwich. Now I have Hawaiian bread here because it was all my Dollar General had in stock. However, I find that it really elevates this a good bit. So I would definitely recommend if you can swing the Hawaiian bread, it adds a really nice sweetness to this. I'm gonna add a squirt of mayonnaise to the center of each of my bread pieces and also a squirt of Dijon mustard. Spread that out into an even layer on your sandwich. Next, we're gonna lay down some sliced cheese. Now, I'm gonna be using Swiss, but I've also used cheddar, and it turned out really great. Here is our leftover sliced ham. Mine is still a little bit frozen. I'm gonna stack some slices on the sandwich. And now if you wanted to go in with a second slice of cheese, which sometimes I do because we like extra cheese in this house. So sandwich the ham between two slices of Swiss. Now we can close it up. And you're gonna need an egg and a splash of milk. I'm gonna start to preheat my skillet, but I'm gonna do it on a pretty low heat because as I mentioned, my ham is still slightly frozen. I'm gonna start with some butter or margarine down on the skillet. And then we get to dunk our sandwich in our egg mixture, soaking both sides of the bread. Plop your sandwich down onto your skillet and we're gonna fry it up on both sides. It's been three minutes, I'm gonna give it a flip. And then one thing that I like to do is to try to make this a little bit more like a panini is I'll take a heavy skillet like my cast iron and kind of press it down. That'll also help the sandwich to heat through more evenly. Time to check on our sandwich here. We wanna make sure all the cheese is melted, that we have a good crust on it. Now, while this may look super crispy on the outside, it's actually quite light and fluffy. Again, we're talking about a French toast type of texture here. So while it may look like a grilled cheese, it's not gonna have the same texture as a grilled cheese. It is, however, a really nice and hearty option, especially for breakfast. This is so good and I can't recommend it enough. I know some people top theirs with syrup or powdered sugar to get that kind of sweet and savory element. The kind of French toast battered one feels more substantial, a lot more hearty, just because it has that added density from the egg that's soaked into the bread. For my recommended third way of using leftover ham, of course, there are a lot of variations on ham-based soups. You have ham and bean soup, you have split pea soup, one of my personal favorites is potato soup. I've never really been much of a bean eater, which is why you don't typically see me featuring beans on my channel. I do like them, I just don't gravitate towards them. I've also never had split pea soup, so that's something I'll probably try later on down the road. However, I did grow up in a very potato-based household, albeit I did not grow up in a soup-based household. I cannot remember a single time that we had soup for dinner. I don't think that my mom or my dad really enjoyed eating soups. I think they're kind of like me and that soups weren't very filling to them, but I think the exception to that is usually a potato soup. This also has the added benefit of being a gluten-free option as well. I have some onions in my pantry that I need to use up, so I'm gonna start by dicing one onion.
busting out the good old soup pot, I'm gonna heat it up over medium heat. About two tablespoons of cooking oil and two tablespoons of butter or margarine. My chopped onion. Eight ounces of leftover ham. Next, I'm gonna add in two cups of low sodium chicken broth. That is important to the way we're gonna make this soup. And two cups of milk. I'm going to let that come up to a simmer before I add in the next ingredient. I have two secret ingredients to making this quite possibly the easiest potato soup that you will ever have. And that is canned potatoes, pre-sliced, already cooked. We go and dump those in. I have two cans of sliced potatoes. I do tend to prefer diced, but I can't always get diced. Sliced works just as well. They're already cooked because they're canned, so all we have to do is kind of heat them up. Instant mashed potatoes. They are pre-flavored, they will thicken your soup, and they have the added benefit of being gluten-free. You can change out the flavor of the instant mashed potatoes to change the flavor of your soup. I've kind of been really digging this roasted garlic and Parmesan flavor lately. And once those are in there, all that's left to do is to let it thicken up. Taste it for seasonings and adjust as you need to. Here's what our texture is looking like, and it is quite thick. Now, if you like it this way, totally fine. It is a bit like mashed potatoes, but I like to thin it out just a little bit more. And I think this works the best off the heat because this soup is incredibly hot and this step will help to cool it down a bit. So I'm gonna go in with an extra half cup of milk and just give that a stir, check the consistency. And I feel like that looks a little bit better. If that's still a little too thick for you, then at that point, I would go in with an extra half cup of chicken broth. Already, that looks a lot better. Pour ourselves a bowl. How easy was that? And look at how creamy and delicious that looks. Nice big chunks of potato in there, nice big chunks of ham. Definitely a very hearty soup. All right, let's dig into our ham and potato soup. I promise you, it really does not get more homey or more comforting than a nice hot bowl of a thick soup. So if I'm gonna eat a soup, it needs to be thick. Otherwise, it's gonna make me hungry in like 15 minutes. If you don't have access to fresh onions, you can use a dried minced onion like this. I do like the pop of freshness from the onion in there. Plus, it's just incredibly customizable depending on what flavor of instant mashed potatoes you have. You can totally change the profile of the soup by swapping out the mashed potatoes. That was only eight ounces of ham, but we turned it into a soup that makes between four to six servings. And really, that's the best way to make the most use out of something like the ham is to turn it into a soup or a stew. I always try to encompass like a wide variety of different ideas and meals. And one of the things that I wanna do is a pasta dish. Now, the idea here is that in a few videos back, I tried some recipes on the backs of packages and one of those it was a broccoli cheese soup. It was the broccoli cheese soup recipe that's on the back of this country gravy packet. And as I was thinking about different ways that I could adapt ham, obviously ham and cheese go really well, so does broccoli and cheese. So I thought we'd try to make that soup again but rather than just eating it as a soup, we're gonna turn it into a sauce for a pasta dish. I am also gonna be making some minor changes to the recipe on the soup packet. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grate up eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese. As I was looking for different recipes using leftover ham, I stumbled across one and it looked really beautiful. I thought it looked really nice, but I looked at the ingredients list and quickly was like, this is a lot of ingredients. So I'm trying to minimize ingredients specifically. And so, I was reading the recipe and kind of getting a grasp on what the recipe was doing. And one of the things that they were doing was making a cheese sauce. And as I was thinking about potentially an easy way to make a cheese sauce, I thought back to this broccoli cheese soup and I realized that it would make a really nice pasta sauce as well. And so that's how we got from point A to point B on this concept that I'm doing here. There's our two cups of shredded sharp cheddar. I am also gonna be dicing an onion, another onion. And the other thing that I'm gonna be doing is chopping a bag of broccoli florets, one that has been thawed but not cooked, but it's gonna cook in the pot, so I really just thaw it out. 
Sometimes when I need to quick thaw broccoli, like in this case, I just took it out of my freezer, I'll just stick it in the microwave in the steam bag for three minutes rather than the five that it needs to cook it all the way through. And I'm just gonna go through and give those a pretty rough chop. It doesn't have to be anything precise. I'm gonna be preparing the sauce separately from the pasta. So I'm gonna start with a couple tablespoons of butter or margarine in a saucepan. We can go in with our diced onion. I'm also gonna add in another eight ounce bag of leftover ham. This is another really quick to come together meal. I'm gonna add in all of my chopped broccoli. Starting to wonder if I should have used a bigger pot. It should fit though. This is the pot that I used last time and the only thing I'm adding is the ham. Now in variation to the original recipe which calls for water in the gravy mix, I'm gonna be using a cup and a half of that chicken broth and one cup of milk. So two and a half cups total. And I'm also gonna add in my packet of country gravy mix. And we're just gonna let that cook until it's slightly thickened. This is about the consistency that we're going for and now I'm gonna start to add in my cheese, half the cheese at the beginning Stir that and make sure all of the cheese is fully melted before you add in the rest. Now I'm gonna go in with the rest of the cheese. As it stands, you have a base. This is a broccoli, ham broccoli and cheddar soup, and you can definitely eat this as is, but by turning it into a pasta dish, we're gonna take this soup, which maybe is only two to three servings, and turn it into something that could easily feed about six people. I mentioned in the video where I originally tried this recipe, that I've been trying to replicate Panera's broccoli cheese soup for a really long time. If you take out the ham and you take out the onions, this tastes identical now. And the only change that I really made was substituting the water for chicken broth. So I feel like this deserves a video on its own, but I think if we added some carrots to this, we could really, really closely replicate Panera's broccoli cheese soup. And then maybe we could try to make a bread bowl or something like that as well. But anyways, back to the casserole. The next thing I'm gonna do is boil a bag of egg noodles. This is a 12 ounce bag and I'm gonna underboil it slightly. So it says seven minutes, but I'm gonna cook it closer to five. I undercooked the noodles slightly because we're gonna be baking this and we don't wanna overcook the noodles, especially egg noodles. And these are egg noodles from Dollar Tree. So they're even more susceptible to overcooking than other egg noodles are. So I'm gonna add those into the pot along with my broccoli, cheese, and ham soup mixture that I have made. Give that all a stir, which already looks pretty marvelous to me. This is like ham mac and cheese basically. And I'm gonna pour this into a baking dish. Now the recipe that I'm using as my inspiration for this uses Ritz crackers as a topping, but I have a half empty bag of fried onions that I really need to use up. So I'm gonna use that instead. If I had the forethought to reserve some of my shredded cheddar rather than putting it all in the soup, I could also put some of that on top as well. This does not need to bake for very long. I'm gonna put it in at 350 for 20, maybe 25 minutes tops. And with that, dinner is served. I have a secret to share with you guys. Sometimes I will film an entire day of meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then I will delete that footage because I don't personally feel like the meals are good enough to share. I really put a lot of care and consideration into the content that I put out and the recipes that I put out. And if I feel like they're not as good as I want them to be, I don't necessarily want to back them. But today has been a really great day of filming and I think that this casserole is gonna be included in that. Hi, honey. Oh, here, I just made you this. It's that soup that you just tried, but with pasta and fried onions, so. How have the meals been today that I, so I gave you the ham and cheese stuffed biscuits. Those were really good. Those were really good. You didn't try the, the sandwich, cause. I had a bite, it was good. You had a bite. Yeah. And I didn't, uh, the potato soup, you didn't try that, so. But yeah, otherwise, been really good today? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah, it was really good. Mm. I know you're not the biggest fan of casseroles, so. No, I hate casseroles. This is a pasta bake, it's not a casserole. 
it got the Michael stamp of approval and really that's like the ultimate gold seal because he's he's a little bit more particular than I am. <laughs> a little bit. Well, that is a wrap on a really good day of meals and all using leftover ham. Hopefully it gives you some ideas on how you can potentially use some leftover Christmas ham or maybe if you live in an area and you can buy a ham on sale, gives you some ideas on how you can kind of maximize that sale price. Everything that I made today was spectacular, but the most favorite was definitely the biscuits in the morning. They remind me so much of a Hot Pocket. Michael and I used to go to this place in Virginia Beach. It was called the Kalashi Factory, and I feel like I could use their menu as some inspiration on many different ways that I could construct those biscuits filled with all sorts of different things, because they do remind us a lot of a Kalashi. So it was a really good day of cooking, and I feel very happy with the recipes that I'm putting out to you guys today. This is going to be my final upload before Christmas, so I do want to take a moment to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I hope you enjoy your time with family. If you are spending time with family, if you're spending it alone or with your significant other, I hope you have the best Christmas that you possibly can, no matter what the circumstances are. With that being said, I am grateful and appreciative to each and every one of you. I hope you are having a fantastic day, and I will see you again soon.